Not only is this video gonna help you take better photos of yourself, it's also gonna help your friend, boyfriend, mom, whoever takes your photos for you, take much better photos after this video. So hi, my name is Nikki. If you don't know me yet, I make a bunch of short form content about photo tips, modeling tips, things like that. So I thought, why not make one big video combining all my best tips, filters, apps, editing tutorials, everything into just one video that you can come back to. So enjoy and let's slay our Instagram together. <laughs> We're gonna start with equipment and I'm just gonna say you don't need the most expensive newest iPhone in order to take good photos. I have the iPhone 13 Pro Max and I love it because of the third camera which allows me to take 3x photos. The 3x zoom lens has become my favorite thing ever for taking photos. I don't know why but they just look so much better than 1x and personally I'm not a fan of the portrait modes on any phones really. I find that phones will never come close to a professional camera anyway so why even try to achieve the professional camera look. A phone is pretty much all you need, but I'll go over some extra equipment that I like to use here and there sometimes. This Amazon selfie light is the best thing ever. It's like 20 bucks. I got it only recently and I have been missing out this whole time. You stick it onto your phone like this and turn it on with the click of a button. It obviously makes a much bigger difference in the dark, but it gives very professional lighting and very easy to use. A tripod with a Bluetooth clicker is very clutch for when you don't have anyone taking photos of you. And this is an extra tip for anyone who has an Apple Watch. You can actually use it to click your photos while being apart from your phone so that you don't have to use self-timer. And lastly, if you're a little more serious about your photos, then you can also get a reflector from Amazon, which is just like a big piece of tin foil that you reflect light off of to make even lighting on both sides of your face. Let's move on to camera settings, which is probably the most important point of this video. And a little disclaimer, just because I have an iPhone, these are kind of like iPhone focus tips, but there will be the same settings on Android, probably just under a different name. So it'll just take a search. The first setting I'll always have on is the grid setting, and this is that three by three grid overlay on your camera. If you've never been to a photography class before, let me introduce you to the rule of thirds. This is a rule that most photographers will be familiar with because it helps you with the placement of objects in your photos. Try to keep any vertical lines of the photo aligned with the vertical grid lines as well as the horizon aligned with the horizontal grid lines. So no more crooked horizon photos, please. The rule of thirds though can also be applied to anything simple such as a selfie. For selfies, your face will usually be positioned in the middle square. For close-up shots that someone is taking of you, your eyes should be in line with the top horizontal line. For half or full body photos, you should be aligned with one of the two vertical lines, but avoid placing yourself directly in the middle. Also, if you're ever looking anywhere in the photo, make sure to leave more space in front of where you're looking rather than behind you. And for scenery photos, don't divide the photo into two halves, like half is the sky and half is the ground. Instead, have it be two thirds of the sky or two thirds of the ground. Following the rule of thirds just makes anything much more aesthetically pleasing for the human eye. Next for camera settings, we have the HDR. Please just turn it off. I don't know why some phones just have it automatically set on, but it ruins the quality of photos and also shows up way brighter on other people's screens. So I don't know if you've ever scrolled on Reels, for example, when it's like dark, you're scrolling, you're scrolling, you're scrolling, and all of a sudden this video pops up and it's just way too bright. And that's because that person that made the Reel probably filmed with the HDR mode on. Prioritize faster shooting should be turned on just so you could like click away as many photos and not have your phone slow down. This next one you'll find helpful if you've ever looked in the mirror and then you turned on your selfie camera and you looked much worse in the selfie camera than the mirror. And there's a setting called mirror front camera which you're gonna turn on and that way your photos aren't automatically gonna flip every time you take them. When taking night photos, I like to turn the night mode off just because it's very rare that a photo will turn out better with it on than off. And if you want to improve your photo quality on socials like TikTok and Instagram, this is how you do it. For TikTok, right before you post a video, you're going to scroll down to where you see advanced settings and click on that and there's going to be a thing called allow high quality uploads and you just have to make sure that that's turned on. And for Instagram, just go to settings and search quality and there should be a thing called turn on upload at highest quality. That way, whatever you post is gonna be saved in your original quality and not be compressed by the apps. Let's talk about lighting next, which can make or break a photo. Having better and brighter lighting increases your phone's ability to take higher quality photos. No more grain, no more blur. It's just gonna be very crisp. Mornings and evenings are the best time of the day to take photos because the lighting kind of faces this way instead of overhead like it does in the middle of the day. And this overhead lighting coming from the sun is usually just very unflattering. Also side note, blue hour with flash like right after the sun goes down is such good photos, I promise. 
Facing any window is obviously the best. I'd be surprised if you don't do that. Please don't blind yourself by looking into direct sunlight for photos. Instead, find somewhere where the sunlight bounces off of and look towards that. This also goes for sunny days outdoors. Instead of taking photos in direct sunlight, just step back into any shade that you see and face where the light is coming from, and this will give you the most majestic lighting. If your photos look too bright or overexposed, just tap on the overexposed area, hold until it says AEAF lock, and then drag the exposure dial down. Tapping and holding will save that focus instead of having to tap and refocus multiple times. And a little extra tip, if you like that dark aesthetic and you always want your photos just to be a little dimmer than usual, go to the exposure setting on your actual camera and drag that dial down, and then go to settings and click preserve exposure settings, which will save this feature for all the photos that you take in the future. Next, we're going to talk about backgrounds. Don't take photos in front of cluttered or busy backgrounds just because it's so unpleasing to the eye. The only exception for this would be like Times Square where all the crowds of people behind you look cool. Otherwise, it usually just takes the focus off of you, which is probably the main subject of the photo. And you don't want that. You want all eyes to be on you. Try not to stand in front of any backgrounds that you'll blend into. Um, this... Instead, you're gonna want somewhere that contrasts you, so like a darker background is gonna look good with a lighter outfit, and vice versa, a darker outfit is gonna look good on a lighter background. Whichever background you're choosing, don't stand too close in front of it. Instead, take a few steps forward, and that will increase the depth of your photo. <laughs> this is a big ick of mine. Be mindful of whatever is sticking out of your head. <laughs> you shouldn't align with anything vertical in your photos. For example, have you ever seen someone stand directly in front of the Eiffel Tower in their photos? Girl, it looks so dumb. <laughs> you have to at least move a little bit to the side or something. Same with trees or buildings sticking out of places they're not supposed to, avoid it. Also, learning how to edit people or just random background specs of your photos will upgrade your photos so much. Now let's talk about the posing. What do you do in your photos? Starting with the face. A big tip I have is for when you're taking photos in any kind of overhead lighting, so like ceiling lighting or midday lighting, usually what's gonna happen is people will look down and these shadows under their eyes will appear. So just remember to always keep your chin slightly up and this will get rid of those raccoon eyes. I usually never face my face straight towards the camera because I have an unsymmetrical face, okay? <laughs> Unless it's for like YouTube videos, because like what am I gonna just film like this? all the time. But yeah, you'll never catch me taking a selfie straight on like this. Instead, I usually just turn my face 45 degrees and then take the photo. It's just so much more flattering, I think, especially when you know what your good side is. Moving on to body posing, which is usually relevant for when someone is taking a photo of you. Half body photos should usually be taken at chest level, so the phone should be like here. And then for full body photos, the phone should be lower and then tilted slightly upwards to elongate your body and almost make you look a little taller. Putting one leg in front for full body photos also naturally elongates your body. Something I always say and what other photographers have said is to make shapes with your limbs. So if you're ever touching your hair, you'll see a triangle forms. Or if I'm like resting my chin on the table like this, then another triangle forms like this. Same with legs, instead of standing like this, just put one leg out to the side and it forms another triangle. And this is just again like what the human eye finds flattering in photos. It makes your photos just so much more dimensional and interesting. Remember to constantly be moving when you're posing and don't be too in your head about it. For constant movement, I also don't mean like go like this and constantly be switching each pose. It has to be very slight adjustments to each pose and that will give for the most natural poses. Also doing natural things and pretending the camera's not even there, like putting on lip gloss, walking, fixing your hair. This is things that you would normally do, except someone's clicking away. <laughs> and be prepared for that initial warm-up of posing, because you're not just gonna snap into really good poses, like, right as soon as you start taking photos. Doesn't work like that, even for me. <laughs> so allow a good chunk of taking photos, just so you can get into that natural-looking posing. That's also why it probably takes a billion tries to get that one perfect photo. And lastly, for posing, practicing in front of the mirror is actually very, very helpful, and it helps you find your flattering angles and poses just by literally doing it in front of the mirror before actually going out and taking photos. How do you think I got better at posing? It all comes with practice. So don't be discouraged, just try to go and take more photos, and as time goes on, you'll get better. Now let's talk about my favorite apps and filters for taking and editing photos. For taking photos by yourself, I definitely recommend Lens Buddy. You could start to take photos on there and it automatically every five seconds clicks the button for you. Or as I mentioned before, a little Bluetooth clicker or an Apple Watch can take photos of you as well without the self-timer. Lightroom Mobile is really good for the minimal editing and also has all the editing settings that you'll need. 
Next there's Visco, which I've been using for a while now, and I have the $40 yearly CAD membership on there, but I don't think I'm gonna renew because the filters there are just kind of outdated for me and I don't find them useful anymore. I also think they made their pro filters more expensive and it's like $80 a year now. The best filters I find on there are A6, J6, G6, and AL1. Tezza is my ultimate favorite editing app currently. I have worked with them before multiple times, so they gave me like their membership and their membership for a year is 53 CAD. The filters I like on there are Coco, Lover, and Honey, and the Film Shop filters, which I like, are Class, Fuji, and Polaroid. I find those Film Shop filters give your photos like that nostalgic feeling. And the last app I use is Airbrush for any like minor face editing. If I have a pimple that like makeup doesn't hide, <laughs> then I will probably edit it out. And it also helps with deleting any like minor specks or people from the background. And lastly, for my little extra tips that I didn't know where to place in this video, for bad quality pics, just turn up the grain on your photos and it'll look like you had it bad quality on purpose. You can vertically distort your photos in the built-in app editor to make yourself taller in photos. Copy and pasting edits in your camera roll is such a cool feature that I found. This is only for if you edit in the photos app, but you can copy and paste to a bunch of photos. I love the HSL tool, which stands for Hue, Saturation, Lightness, to edit specific colors in my photos. So for example, if you have like yellow teeth in your photos and you want to turn down the yellows, you just go to the yellow color and desaturate it and then turn up the luminance a bit. And lastly, friendly reminder, <laughs> clean your lens before taking any kinds of photos. You don't even realize it, but your face oils, your finger oils, everything like dirt and whatever just fills up that camera lens and makes your photos instantly bad quality. Also, if you've ever taken photos in the night and you have those like light streaks just going along your photos, it's probably because your lens is dirty. That is all for this video. I hope you liked these tips and I hope they make your photos just a little bit better. On my YouTube shorts as well as Instagram reels and TikToks, I always post more photo tips and photo ideas and posing tips. So make sure to follow those if you aren't already. Also, if you like the rings and earrings I'm wearing, they are from my brand Novi. We have ongoing discounts also on Instagram at Novi by Nikki. So make sure to follow. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Ten bad bitches in a mess. Bridge song, Millie Rock, them diamonds on me dancing.